when the insecurity does show up, because it does for everyone at some point, what form does it tend to take for you? Well, what is it that you tend to question? I mean, most of the insecurity that I had early on was was just, uh, it seemed to be the moment before the show started. It was like, I booked this, and this is early on, like first couple of years I was playing, and uh, I'd have, you know, I played a ton of acoustic shows, open mics in various bars and clubs and things, but, you know, the first probably 50 or 100 gigs, I would you know, I'd book the show, everything would be cool. The days leading up to it, I'd tell all my friends and trying to get them to come out. And then I'd show up, the day of the show, I'd get there to the venue and I'd just have this, like, pit in my stomach. Like, I just hated that I put myself in this position. It's like, why did you do this? You could be sitting at home right now watching TV or hanging out with your friends or drinking beer. You could be doing whatever you want to do, but you are got yourself here, now you got to play. And... But once I started playing, all that just went out the window. The first song or two, I might have had a little flutter, some, some, you know, irregular breathing. <laughs> but um, as soon as I started playing a couple songs in, I mean, I'm at home. This is what I'm supposed to do. Uh, and so that was, I got over that, you know, fairly quickly, I guess. Uh, but, you know, sometimes the other insecurities would come out, like when I was in the, uh, writing rooms for the first time. When I first came up to Nashville and started writing with people that I'd never met before, uh, and just getting in a room with what, you know, I felt like some of these people are just like, I've heard their songs, I've seen their work, I've, I've, uh, I've listened to their stuff on the radio, and here I am writing a song with them, and just kind of nerve-wracking, thinking... What do I have to What do I have to say that's that's gonna impress this guy? I mean, he's had number ones on the radio. What can I possibly bring to the table? But after a while, you just gotta realize that I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't have gotten asked to come here if I didn't have something that they were interested in. So um, there you go. Then you sit down and you just get through the awkward hellos and conversations with people that you don't know. And you sit down and start coming up with ideas. and uh, It was nerve-wracking at first, and every once in a while it still kind of is when I get in a room with somebody that I've never written with before, but uh, they, uh, they work themselves out after a few minutes, usually, and things aren't so bad. But uh, other than that, man, I don't think... Every once in a while there's insecurities that I'll have if we're playing a new song that we haven't played for, uh, you know, even if we've rehearsed it a thousand times, just getting in front of people for the first time and playing it, everything's different when the lights are on, so, um, that's another type of insecurity that I'll have every once in a while, but, I don't know, I feel like I'm a fairly confident person, I hope it doesn't come off as egotistical, <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, you know, fairly confident in what I do. So I can remain comfortable most of the time. <laughs> There's a, what I find interesting is in all three of the examples you gave, you give an example of that vulnerability that is it going to be good enough? Am mm -hmm. I worthy enough to be with this writer? And in all three examples, the thing that pulls you out of it is that self belief that yeah. you talk yourself into. You sort of go, well, yeah, I, I love playing live. I'll be okay after two songs. Or, well, you know this. 20 number ones ago, that guy was also just starting. Like, yeah. Of course I have a right to be here. What is the core of that self-belief? Do you know where that came from? Man, I don't. I, I It started <laughs> it started really young. I mean, I, I always just... Singing was something that I did before I could talk, really. I mean, I feel like... I don't remember this, is what I've been told, but... Um, I was as soon as I learned how to whistle, I was just the whistling. I was a whistlingest fool you ever met. All, all, all through my younger years, and singing was something that I did just as much. And so I had a, you know, a good ear for music, and I started singing. And I just started from a really early age, and I knew that I could, and I could hear things, and I could mimic uh, a lot of the things that I heard. And so 
when it comes to singing, I've never really been, the only time that I'm self-conscious about it or so if I'm, you know, a little under the weather, I got a cough or I got some upper respiratory stuff happening, whatever. I had a rough night, didn't get much sleep, and I'm hoarse. <laughs> that's the only time that I'm really, like, worried about what I'm going to sound like or anything. And so that's probably where it comes from. Lucky for me, I get to do what I feel like I'm probably best at in the world for a living. And so that's really where the confidence comes from. I mean, I'm, I'm not sitting here saying that I feel like I'm the best. I know there's people out there that are better. Uh, but I know what I can do. And uh, so far, it's done me right. So I've done, done okay with it. So I guess I'll just continue doing what I'm doing and uh, not, not worry about what everybody else thinks <laughs> so much. That's another thing, too. I've just never really been that concerned with what everybody else thinks. I mean, if, you're li if you like it, that's great. If you don't like it, that's cool, too. I mean, I'm not... Everybody's got their, uh, <clears throat> their opinions, and you can share it with me if you like. It doesn't change my, my mind one way or another, so...